Okay. Uh, you finish one of your nights exploring one of the local taverns. Uh, I believe it was of Elvish make the door locks behind you. Other people try to get in. Um, would you mind rolling a uh, perception check for me as you're heading down the well-paved, clean streets? Let's see how yeah. that works out. <laughs> Nine. Nine? Yes. Okay. Uh, all, you don't really think too much of it. Uh, as you're walking away, you hear somebody like start to mumble and complain to themselves as a thud. Most likely, it, they got rejected. Fell on their butt. <laughs> uh you meander your way down the streets. Uh, there are occasionally people going by. They're well dressed. They're of what would you would assume to be at least middle or upper class. Uh, you hear some. You have you see some people with dogs as they're going by. Um, all of them are just kind of ignoring everyone else around them, just involved in their own conversation. Uh, you start to uh, head down one of the, the pathways to get back to your place of, of sleep for the night that your uh, one of one of your partners set up for you to make sure that you were safe. And would you mind describing your characters? Actually, no, we don't need to do that yet. There are no other players yet. Um, can I get? Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go into a secret area. Give me a moment. Hello. Uh, hey. Hello. Would you mind doing a uh, stealth check for me? You can use personal dice or you can do uh, in D&D Beyond. It doesn't matter which one you do. Okay. I'll do, um, I guess I'll do a stealth check then. Uh, yeah, I can do stealth. After recently entering the city, uh, you're trying to find a place to be able to sleep, but you notice that these places are usually are more on the guarded side, and you're trying to find a location that's more welcoming of just yeah. escaped people that aren't like upper nobility or middle class. Yeah, I got an 18. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to go back into the thing over here. Yeah. Hello again. Belmia, can I get you to make a, a perception check for me? Uh, yes. Twelve, sorry. Okay. Um, you're not necessarily sure what is going on but uh, you blink for a second as you normally would do anyway and a little wisp of just shadow goes before you and crosses to the other side of the street Any response to that? Just consider that to be a normal occurrence? Um, pro all I can think of is she probably just, like, as you said, blink, but, like, internally be like, well, this is, this isn't great. What on God's green earth was that? You check around the corners, and there is nothing there. It's just, must have been, like, a little 
leaf or something that happened to blow directly in front of your eyes. Whatever that was, it was strange. Uh, you continue down to uh, one of the or the location, the bed and breakfast equivalent uh, that your one of your partners set up for you. Uh, and with that, we move on to the next place, to the next person. Uh, Creel, Izzy, could you pronounce your character's name for me? Uh, yeah. Izzy, could you pronounce your character's name for me? Okay, um, I think it's pronounced, uh, Krellis? Or... Crellies. I have not pronounced this out loud, so... Okay. <laughs> Me neither. That's alright. Teamwork. Yes. Alright, so... Yeah, I think his name is Crellies. Uh, or at least that's how it's pronounced here. <laughs> okay. Crellies. Yeah. Uh, Crellies. Continuing yeah. into an unknown area. Uh, Wait, what? Do you... You, you, uh, your self trek was to continue to go unnoticed. Yeah. As you, uh, pass by a person who seems to be of upper middle standing, you look from around the back end of an alley that you made your way hastily towards the end of to be able to gain cover. Um, is there anything you wanted to do? Did you want to follow that person or go on your own in a different direction? He'd probably follow that person. Okay. Uh, can you, I mean, you're going at a decently slow pace and you know how to maneuver yourself. Um, let's go ahead and what's your, uh, Passive perception. Passive perception mm -hmm. is... 16. Wonderful. Yeah, so you're able to notice where this person goes, maintaining your stealth that you've already done, um, as that's like a broad area. We're not going to have you do it all the time. You're decently specialized in this. Um... When you get to towards the glass-faced windowed building, uh, it says uh, Bubbles Tea Shop. <laughs> <laughs> you see that the same woman that you were following goes into the building has locked the door and turned off a couple of lights before heading up a back uh, up a set of stairs in the back uh, as they're heading up the stairs is there anything that you wanted to do well he's just looking around for like um maybe he'll uh, he'll maybe, like, knock on the door, maybe. Okay. Just see if then there's anybody in there or something. Of course. Uh, Belmia and Carlos, would you be able to describe your characters to each other? Belmia, you see Carlos at the door after knocking on it, and you see the person that you were following, Carlos. Um, or what Kylis would be able to see as she kind of just like cracks the door open a little bit kind of weary of like suddenly there's a person at her door um, the best he could see was kind of a 
very light shade of like purpley skin but because it's kind of dark um it looks a little darker in color um her hair is kind of disheveled so she just took it out of a um kind of like a high ponytail it's a little bit in her face it's much darker than her skin color and only as i said since the door's cracked only one eye can be kind of seen um with a little bit of light kind of behind her it looks very her eye at least looks very um a dark yellow color um but she doesn't really let the rest of her body be seen so she's kind of weary of there's just a stranger at her door <laughs> When you see um, Curly's, you see that he is, um, uh, he is about, he, okay, let me just, okay, yeah, he's about, um, five foot, five inches. He has, like, a cloak over his head. And uh, he has, like, a, this large cloak over his head, and um, he has, like, um, he has, like, blue eyes that are just, like, observing everything, and, like, a scar over his lip. Hello? Hello? Are you s Do you have a- is this a place where I can stay for the night? Um, I presume so. Is there any particular reason you picked here? No particular reason, it just looked nice. I guess, fair enough, come in. Kind of just, like, opens the door. Uh, only enough to fit his, if he turns sideways, just enough to fit his torso through the door. <laughs> yeah. Alright. <laughs> just, like... As you open it up a little Thank bit, you. there's kind of like the little bell that's attached to it that kind of dings as as you go back through. Thank you. Make yourself at home, I guess. There is a L-shaped sofa in the corner with a little like oval coffee table that's got some white knit doilies on it. And the coffee scene slightly off center. Uh, yeah. There is a couple like glass lamps in front of the big, the two big windows on either side of the door. And there's like the counter, another L shaped counter to slightly mirror the couch on the far right, front right corner with a menu above it with a bunch of different types of teas and coffees. Uh, and then in the center, directly across from the door, is a relatively steep staircase that goes upwards. Is this like a bed and breakfast? D yeah, that's exactly what it is. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, like, he didn't know. Yeah. Looks very um... nice. Um, Bomea just kind of makes her way from the door after making sure she shuts it all the way. Mm -hmm. Kind of latches it shut so nobody can get in from the outside. So she's kind of, she's in a new place. And she's not really familiar with this area very well. Mm -hmm. Kind of weary of um, people coming in. So after she shuts the door and latches it, she kind of walks over to... Um, the sofa takes a seat on the kind of the at least a little tidbit that would stick out of the little l shape yeah uh making sure she doesn't look away from kralis since she's has this weird feeling in the back of like this is this is odd why is somebody just deciding, hey, this is a nice place to sleep. I'm just going to come in and stay. She's a little on edge. Um, 
she kind of clears her throat for a second after getting her nerves down. It just, um, so here of all places, uh, yeah. you decided a bed and breakfast. I guess that fits. I mean, yeah, it's like a place that where you can stay for just a few days. I see. We don't really have these back where I'm from. Hmm. Foreign concept, I guess you could say. It's too bad. <laughs> and, they're pretty. That's too bad. They have like lovely. F they have like lovely food and stuff. At least for breakfast. <laughs> I, I see. Um, well, I don't want to be unhospitable. Uh, is there anything I can grab for you, I guess? Do you have any, like, apples or anything in the back? Um, I think we do. Hold on, let me go. Let me look. You, you stay put. Don't move. Okay, you're just gonna, like... I don't know, he's gonna, like, sit on one of the couches and just, like, alright, stay there. <laughs> um, Belmia, can you give so, me an, an investigation check? Uh, yes, indeed, a Reno. Hold that thought. Ah. Uh. Whoa. Fifteen. Fifteen? There are yes. some apples. There are also some oranges, slightly stale loaves of bread. Um, there's also some meat that's got some salt on it. Uh, inside of like a little basket with a lid on it. Back behind the counter, you kind of lift up the, the little service flap that's on the edge of some counters near the cast register and you, you're able to find a few apples and yeah, you, you're you're able to find a, an apple that looks pretty appeasing. Um, so she uh, after like looking around debating on if she should be more of a gracious host and bring a little bit of everything she just decides that well he wanted an apple so an apple's what he's gonna get <laughs> she picks up the best looking one and hesitantly but you know with a little bit of confidence walks back over to him uh she extends her hand with the apple just kind of resting on her palm in front of him a little bit and just gives a little bit of a look of worry but trying to mask it behind confidence just here okay. as you requested thank you <clears throat> you're welcome okay my name is Carlise by the way what's Pleasure. yours it's Bell Mia that's a lovely name thank you I Carlise that's it's different mm -hmm. um are you from around here, I presume? I'm from a little bit of everywhere. Well, that's comforting. Everywhere in terms of you just travel a lot, or you just... Play. I, I see. Interesting. What about you? Um, well, I'm I'm not from this area, this whole little uh, continent, I guess you could call it. I'm not from this region. Hmm. Well, it is a good well, it is a good region, I guess, but I don't know if it's not really better than any others, but. Oh well, I hope you find your stay here. It's hospitable. Different. Uh, not what I'm used to, at least. 
traveling can be hard. Yeah, well, when you're separated from a large area that you've become so accustomed to, it takes a little while to get used to the new area, I suppose. Hmm. So what are your rates? Or is this your sh- this shop yours or Oh, I no. <laughs> One of my um my partner decided that this would be a good place to for me to stay for a while. I I, I don't have any rates. You're free to stay, I guess, as long as you'd like. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple like rooms on the <laughs> couple rooms upstairs if you'd like to pick one. It's no big deal. I'm good with anything, so I guess I'll just have to pick randomly. Unless, of course, you're probably already staying in a room, so. Oh. Uh, it, it doesn't matter. Whatever room we decide, I'll just, if I'm staying in there, I'll just move my stuff. I'm not going to get in somebody's way who knows this area better than I. Hmm. <clears throat> All right. Well, maybe I can, maybe I can show you some places, or show you around a little bit. That would be nice. Have a tour guide, I guess. Mm-hmm. That'd be great. And so he's just gonna, basically, just gonna. All right. If well, if that's it. It's getting late, so I would like to choose a room <laughs> sooner rather than later. Well, um. Feel free. So he's just going to continue eating his apple and he's going to go up in there and choose a random room. <laughs> okay. As you go upstairs, it kind of wraps around. So it goes forward, up, and then kind of retreats backwards. And you have to kind of make a U-turn to go up another set of stairs. Uh, and it comes to a relatively thin hallway with three rooms. There's one to the right, middle, and left when you un- come up. All right. He's just going to go to the one in the middle, but he's going to make sure not to choose the one that she's currently presiding in. Sure. Uh, Let me roll for funsies and see what happens. Oh, my. Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, Can you roll me a 20 and tell me higher or lower <laughs> uh, d20 I mean it was a 17 so it's higher perfect okay yeah so it it is um I also rolled privately, but the people watching could see what I rolled. So yeah, you picked the one that she's not occupying. Okay. Yeah, you're good. All right. Yeah. So he's just gonna set the set down his stuff and then probably try to get some head eye. Yeah. It's it's decently comfortable. Belmia, your guest has gone upstairs. Is there anything you're doing? Um, she's mainly just making sure things are tidy, since she didn't take into consideration that this would be a place that some people may visit, and it, there's some stuff on the floor that she had just kind of dumped when she got (laughs) there and didn't really pay any mind to putting it in a room. (laughs) She's trying to make sure it all looks nice and tidy before she picks it up and tries to take it upstairs with her. Of course. It just takes time. It's not overly. Did you? You don't need to roll anything for it. It just takes like five to ten minutes for you to pick everything up, make sure that the place is locked up, everything's secure, and you head upstairs. Yours, you know, is the one on the far left. You head up there, um, and I'm gonna pull you into a, a side room. So, when you get up into this area, um, 
the I I need to remind myself of something. Okay. Um when you get up there you see a envelope on the pillow of the bed. And a little rectangle of some kind. Um, so she's kind of like, looks at it for just a split second of confusion more of anything. And picks up the envelope and slowly tears it open and pulls out the uh, stuff inside. Okay. Um, Maria, one of your partners has left a little note saying, I hope that this is okay for you. I really knew that you liked snacks, food, and tea, so I made sure to pick a place that had all of those for you. It's a little small, it's a little cramped. Uh, I made sure that the place was going to be closed for the time that you're visiting, so you shouldn't have any customers coming in. Um, If you need anything, just... Send out one of these letters, and I'll I'll get it whenever I can. She kind of looks as she's reading. A little bit of tears come into her eyes of like, oh, I miss you guys. And hugs, puts the letter to her chest, and just kind of holds it there for a second. Takes a deep breath, and just has this big old smile on her face, remembering that. She has people waiting for her at home. Yeah. She doesn't need to worry about being alone. Yeah. And there's also a rectangle of whatever your favorite snack would be. Condensed into a bar. (laughs) (laughs) Brilliant. It's just chocolate. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm going to move us back. And with that, uh, we fade out, and we're going to head on to uh, Noria. Okay. (laughs) Uh... Let me switch this over. After the recent events that happened to you, there's some emotion, some overwhelming urges, some just generic despair that You're not really sure what you want to do and how you want to take care of it. Um, It's a bit much. And being able to handle not being where you're supposed to, that's a lot to take in. You end up on uh, on on the docks your ship pulls in needing a break from wherever you came from what's your plan as you are finally able to step off um I mean Noria looks around and is looking for any close establishment okay um you see uh, since this is like the dock area you see um, it's very dark out right now there is what would have been um, fishing like stalls selling fish from people who have been out there are like little knickknacks and trinkets for like welcome to the city stuff for new people that show up Um, you see a couple buildings with what looks like light and some form of interaction. There's people inside. There doesn't seem to be overly rowdy. There's one that's got um, people kind of laughing and 
enjoying their life and there's a person from what you can see that's standing on a stage you don't really know what it is from this distance there is a place that seems to be a lot more quiet and more dimly lit um, and those are the two main options that you see for lit establishes establishments this late at night um can i roll a perception to see what or investigate what those are sure you can i'm going to be interchangeable with however you feel like would be the best option for you if it's investigation or perception okay uh... and just let me know which one you chose Heck yeah, my die is slow. <laughs> so this one, I just pull out my real die. Yeah, pull out your real dice. Just use the real ones. It's fine. Uh, we have God. other people using um, those too. That just means you have to do math now. Yeah, I'll just pull out my real die. <laughs> okay. If you said um, something, I'm gonna get do, cut out. I'm gonna do perception because I have more, I have higher perception. Sure. And what what are, what are you trying to use your perception t to accomplish? Um, to perceive what either establishment are. Of course. Um, and I rolled a fifteen. Okay. Effectively, you see one establishment to be more of like a restaurant that happens to have performative entertainment uh, there is a what looks to be a relatively taller humanoid with playing some kind of stringed instrument that rests on their shoulder uh, and then the other one is a bit more somber and like less populated of a, of a place that seems to be more of like an alcoholic centered establishment they most likely serve food as well you see people see one of the uh waiters in there carrying a tray of something from a distance we have no clue what it is uh i'll walk towards the alcoholic establishment okay <laughs> ah drugs all right definitely need the load off as you walk down this dock you smell the very strong scent of just fish and like salt Yum. water. Yum. Yeah. And it almost kind of like overcomes your senses to the point where it's mildly uncomfortable. Uh, you walk yeah. down the end of the dock, it kind of sways beneath your feet as you continue to move. And you reach the alcoholic establishment. Uh, let's randomly come up with a name to name it. Uh, let's call it the Sunken Cup. So you guys, you're you're gonna go ahead and head inside. Yeah, I'm gonna head inside. Okay. Um, let me look that up. Okay. When you get inside, you see um, a half-orc that's behind the bar. You see just a human male and a human female wa uh, walking around delivering the food and drinks. Um, you see a kind of darker humanoid that's got a cloak kind of three seats from the far left corner uh, you got a couple people you got two more humans two guys playing cards in the center table and that's kind of all that's going on right here it's late in the afternoon um could Noria walk up to the bar? Mm-hmm. And I'm gonna guess the orc is the bartender? Correct. 
It's it it's looks orc, but it's um when you examine it more closely, you can see humanoid features as well. Okay. Um. Is the do, do I have to call up the bartender? Is the bartender gonna come to me? No. If you if you're walking towards it, I mean they're behind. He he he's behind a bar. Okay, so I, I go up to the bar. Sure. Hey, what's up? Anything um, I can uh, help with? Uh, Noria uh, waves and pulls out a notepad mm -hmm. and writes down a extremely alcoholic beverage that could get her hammered real good. Sure. Uh, oh, of course, we can get that for you. That would be... Um, Three silvers, is that fine? Yeah. Uh, Noria pulls out three silvers and just slams them on the table. Okay. Uh, one second. Hello. You have been self isolated. Oh no. <laughs> Can I get you to roll a uh, per perception check for me? Yeah. You're the, uh, the the hooded figure in the back. Sixteen. Okay. You look. You hear the sound of what seems to be three coins being slammed against a thick counter table of the bar up front. Um. I'm gonna ask. Noria to describe himself when you when we return back, just so that way other people, but this is directly what you see when they describe it as well. Okay. So, Noria, as you slam down the three coins, um, the half orc nods in understanding pulls from like the second from the top shelf this almost clear bo bottle that has actually like print printed on to the side what makes it look like a ship in a bottle but as soon as he picks it off the shelf you can see it's just labeling on the front uh it smells like what people would use to disinfect a severed arm it's it's strong it smells like pure alcohol. Noria just slams it down like it's nothing. <laughs> Great. Can I get you to make a con save? A con save. <laughs> oh, I need to look at your there you go. sheet as well. Uh. Somehow a twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> with with your hopeful anticipation of being able to block out emotions with alcohol, your emotions are and your thoughts still outweigh the amount of alcohol that you've just consumed. With a twenty-two, damn. With a twenty-two. Unfortunately, your body is so used to the concept of alcohol running through your system oh. that, it, that it just, you've become so capable of just dealing with it. You've gained, you've grown your own tolerance. Is there anything that anybody else inside this establishment would like to do? I'm going to wait for like 10 seconds, and if nothing happens, then I'm going to assume the answer is no. Okay, so as you are downing this, the... I'm guessing it's just straight at the bar, too. The half work offers just kind of lifts up the bottle again and asks if you want more. 
Arya nods. Okay. That would be. Another... That would be. <laughs> a, that would be another, another three. three. Yeah, it slams down another three. Okay. Uh, go ahead and do another con save. Seventeen. <laughs> okay. Um. It seems that your capability of being able to hold your your tolerance is being a, quite a burden to you right now. You just want to completely forget your sorrows and delve into the bottom of a bottle. Uh, the concept runs through your mind of just taking the rest of the bottle. You're only about a quarter of the way through. Noria has some self-control and just takes the two. Okay. But yes, at that point, that is that is where you're at. And let me head over here. Put that up here. Um, let's do... For story purposes, we're going to do it in this order. Ace. Hello. Hello. As what what what's drawn you to the the bar this night? Info. Info? Yep. Okay. Uh you're sitting there by yourself just enjoying whatever it is that you've already decided to order. Is there anything that you're wanting to do on your own, or...? I'm just... observing and listening. Observing and listening. Alright, can you roll me a... perception check again? Fourteen. Uh, the same individual at the bar is dealing with going through a second glass in quite a short amount of time. The people, the two people in the center, one of the uh, one of the guys just lost probably about four gold worth of money. And, uh, they're a bit on the upset and hostile side about it. But, beyond that, there's not really anything that sticks out too much. Is there anything else that you would like to attempt or accomplish? Uh, nope, just keep listening and observing. The next time, since this is what your character seems to just be doing, I'm going to have you uh, be able to do so with um, advantage as your main focus is listening intently. Alright, sounds good. Okay. Alright, let's zoom out uh, and head over to the next individual here. So, Blanche. <laughs> That's me. That's yeah. you. Your arms are full. You've got stuff hanging over the edge of your arm. You have jangle every time you make a step. It's dark out. 
You're just trying to figure out where the heck this place is that your dad told you about? Uh, you walk past one of the establishments. Uh, let's call it... The Finished Fiddle. <laughs> okay. Uh, you, you see somebody playing an instrument in their arms, and you're like... That's that's not the place. It's supposed to be more on the uh, the somber side. Uh, you see another place that with its li lights up, that's labeled as the uh, the sunken cup. All right, ah, that's what it was. That's what it was. What's your what's your your plans here? Uh. If it's the place that my dad told me about, I guess I'm going there. Okay. I have to sell that... The stuff? Yeah, the stuff. Okay. The treasures and... Uh. So, uh, I'd like for you to make a dexterity save. Uh. How do I... I just roll a 20 and I add my... thing? Correct. There's the constitution save, or the dexterity saves, which is the block of six on the right. Or sorry, left. Near the top. Mm. Yeah, but I, I want to roll with my dice. Yeah, roll with your dice and you just add that number. Okay. Or subtract that number. As some of you rascals Twi have. 22. 22. Great. Not a single piece of, of your stuff is is lost in the process of taking it from the ship all the way to here. Uh, what's your method of entry? My what? Method of entry to the to the sunken cup. Well, since my hands are kind of full, I think I'm gonna kick okay. the door to open it. Go ahead and make me a uh, a athletics ch or acrobatics check. Um, 23. Great. So as you lift up your foot and then thrust it heavily forwards, the entire door just crashes in and falls off. Nice. <laughs> Noria and uh, other person in the place. You see a person whose arms are filled with treasure smash down and break the door down to the ground. Portions of the, the door still attached by the hinges, but like ripped apart from each other. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Noria just looks up from the bar, looks over, and kind of just nods her head in um, appreciation. <laughs> um, hold on. Lazar, can you make me your advantageous perception or investigation check? Okay, so what are you doing in the, the meantime, Blanche? You just knocked uh, down a door. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm gonna go towards the counter. Okay. To talk with the bartender, I guess. Here, uh, what do I see? If I see something. <laughs> you, um, roll me a perception check. Because your arms are filled up to the point where they, you kind of have to look over your pile of stuff in your arms. Okay. So you might not see... see. Yeah, you see people in here. <laughs> you see... Okay. You see a person in the back, you see two people in the center, one person sitting at a bar, and the, the person behind the bar, and that's it. Okay, I'm gonna go towards the counter, like the bar, okay. and just... Um, put the the stuff there on the counter. Okay, Lazar, what was your your thing? Twenty one. Twenty one. Okay. Um, 
you see that this is quite a large, valuable pile of goods. <laughs> <laughs> the very, like, surprisingly large for just a random sleepy time tavern on the edge of the docks. Uh, <clears throat> the half work looks at you, Blanche. What? What? Why? Why did you just slam all this nonsense on the table on the counter? I have special goods to sell at a special place, if you may. Uh, you're. Hold on, hold on I'm gonna move you. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Your dad told you about. Um methods of discretion <laughs> yeah I was discreet <laughs> <laughs> knowing full well that you're going the wrong way about this because you're like I don't care I mean that was subtle no <laughs> was it not <laughs> kicking down a door drawing everybody's attention and slamming the pile of stuff on a counter that's not discreet. <laughs> Is people gonna do something about it Probably or not? not? Probably not. Exactly, so I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Moving us back. Yeah. Uh, so, this is not the place. Can, what? Can, can you give me an insight check? Insight. Uh, where is it? Oh boy. Seven. Okay, let me try something. Let me see how this goes. Okay. Well, he tried to lie to you and got a four. <laughs> oh, cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Because he's very frazzled as to what the heck is happening and why this person doesn't know the proper methods and is trying to cover the tracks. Uh, <laughs> this, um, you feel the a, a gentle tap on your right shoulder as the female waitress, the humanoid, taps on your shoulder uh, two times and then three on your left side left shoulder you know this to mean follow me well I take my shit and I follow her <laughs> okay <laughs> okay so you take your stuff they go into the back of where where all the food is brought from you go through uh the double doors of the kitchen and then we're gonna pull you into another location again so as you enter the kitchen they take you to the back right where the like effectively refrigerator is they have a lot of um, it's more like dry storage than a refrigerator, but it, in the back corner of that, they, uh, she moves one of the crates aside and shows a hatch that lifts up and you can go down in there to be able to sell your stuff. Hatch under what? Under the floor, uh, under one of the crates in the back of a storage food storage okay uh you head down in there and you see that there's like a tremendously long hallway like horizontal hallway that goes what looks like for probably the length of a, a hockey field all the way down but it's super thin and there's just like all stalls lined up on just one side of the wall. 
All right. What are you doing with all of your stuff? Uh, I'm going to go there. Mm -hmm. Jump. Jump in the, the hatch. Okay. With my stuff. And what do I see? So, a super long, like, 20 to 30 foot hallway with a bunch of small stalls with about 10 feet of nothing in between them. So, they're individual people selling small portions of stuff in, like, a 20 foot long by 10 foot wide stall, personal stall with a gap in between each one. I know if I would actually know where to go, like, no to if I, I sell my goods to a specific one or like if I go to work like Roman intelligence check. Save okay. save, not check. Save, okay. Fourteen. Okay. Um effectively enough, you know that they have the person you're supposed to be trying to sell your stuff to has an eye patch over specifically their left eye with a little cut that goes vertically across the eye patch. So you look, you take your time and look at each of them, and eventually you find the individual that you're supposed to sell your stuff to. Okay. Oh, hello. Well, I'm going to send my stuff. You're just going to sell your stuff? Great. Okay. Um, roll me 2D100. Two, two D I do not have a hundred! Great. Wait, I'm going to do it on... Okay. The... Okay. Roll to everyone. What was that? Uh, okay. 81. So, you this, now keep in mind the stuff that you have here does not go to you; it goes to your father. Yeah, I know. So this is sixty-four gold, seventeen silver is the total. Okay, wait, what? How? Because you rolled two d hundred. One of them was a sixty-four. One was a seventeen. You can see that. Yeah. Oh, okay. That's I cool. have the game logs opened. Oh, okay. That's so, cool. So, 64, the higher number is the gold, the lower number is the silver. Or gold. And you guys sit there for probably, like, 20 minutes and get, like, they handwrite every piece of treasure and its value to show that with, like, a handwritten receipt, 64 gold, 17 silver. Good. So that way you can take that back to your to your father and show him everything. And negotiate a percentage. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you could do that, sure. Of course. Okay, so we're going to pull you back out of the underground market. Yep. They're gonna, going back she's going to cover uh... the crate, and we're going to move you back to the generic chat. Yep. Hello. Uh, Bazaar, roll me a an, an additional perception investigation check, as well as a separate one that's insight. All right, one more time. You you were a little choppy there. Uh, for one roll, either perception or investigation. The second one is insight. Uh, the first one is 13. Okay. And inside is 18. Okay. So, taking the time to kind of analyze, you figure they made rough, like, that was a roughly 50 gold worth of stuff that they just sold off. Um, and you can tell that the individual who was carrying all of the stuff uh, is super duper cocky. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, is there any? <laughs> okay. You, you heard me. Is there anything? So, yes. Sorry. Go ahead. Do they walk past me when I when they go to the back? You're in the corner against the wall, the opposite side of the bar. So they would not be going directly past you. They'd actually be going along the counter, past Nor Noria, to reach the double doors of the kitchen. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else that mm. Noria, Lazar, or Blanche would like to do? Um, I would like to sit at a counter and order something to drink. Okay. Are you going to sit next to the person at the, the bar, or are you going to sit separate and have your own spacing? Uh, I guess I will have my own spacing. Great. Okay, so you sit like three three stools separated in between you, and uh, this what appears to be more feminine creature, humanoid. Can I go sit next, or not next, but uh, at the end of the bar closest to the, the double doors so I can try and get sneak peeks? Sure. Uh, that would be about uh, probably two spaces. So there's you at the very end. And then we've got uh, th two spaces with Blanche two, spaces, two empty spaces away from you. And then Noria three after that. Okay. I'm going to document that in my little note keeping device. Reasons. We got one, two, and three. Okay. Uh, as the night goes on, Lazar, why don't you go ahead and roll me uh more what one more perception? Uh, with advantage or without? Well, it, it depends. If you're going to be focusing on any possible conversation next to you. It'll be just a straight roll. But if um, your entire no. goal is to look between the double doors, then it can be advantage. I'm gonna focus on the double doors. Okay. Oh, what the f- Ten! <laughs> <laughs> uh, not sure what's going out. And in there, it seems to be mostly food. But, I mean, that logically doesn't make sense. So you know something is going on, but you have no clue what it is. Because brain works, but it's just you don't notice anything off. Do I notice that he's trying to sneak? Uh, roll me a... Lazar, can you do a stealth? And Blanche, can you do a perception? Thirteen. Eighteen. Yeah, you notice that occasionally they glance over there, but they occasionally are glancing other places too. Blanche, it doesn't really seem like they're too focused on it. Okay. Uh, is what what is the plan for the three individuals sitting at the bar? Drink. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I have something to drink. Um, what would you like to put into your stomach fluids? Uh, I don't know, something tasty? Something tasty? Okay. Something tasty, yeah. Oh, probably something with milk in it. Okay. Because... okay. So, they offer some potatoes, fish, and a glass of milk for two silver and five copper. That will do, I guess. A, a fish? Was it fish? Uh, Just say fish. Potatoes, fish, yeah. milk. 
You're right next to the ocean. I know. <laughs> I like fish. Okay. I want fish. Okay. <laughs> Lazar, order the cheapest drink and also some fish. Sure. Uh, that would be silver, five copper. How Uncle much Fizz? was it for me? Uh, two silver, five copper. And yours, Lazard, just comes with just the fish, no extra, like, potatoes or seasonings. It's just the fish and uh, some cheap alcohol. It's fine. I swallow the fish whole. There you go. Anything else for you in the meantime, Noria? Um, can we see, uh, Lazar? Yeah, they, they are, one, two, three, like, six seats down along the bar. Okay, well, there's, Noria's there's, gonna... There's a, a white cat, or, there, yeah, there's a, there's a cat human in between you and Lazar. Oh, I'll see him gulp down the the fish hole and just make a strange face. <laughs> like, like, oh god. Lazar, what's your passive? Perception. Uh... Perception. My passive perception? Mm -hmm. A 14. So, yeah, you you notice the other person at like basically the far end of the bar is is giving you a curious and mildly con like confuddled face, seeing as you swallowed a fish hole. Do not care. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll never end up talking to each other. We do That's not fine. care about people. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, yeah. Is it, if that's all you guys are doing for the night, is just kind of finishing up food and heading home. Is that what the plan is? No. Okay. <laughs> I, I would like to know if the girl that uh, brought me behind... Uh, is there? Tell there. Yeah. I would like to talk with her. Okay. Hello. What's up? Uh, what's what? What can I do? I would talk with her lower voice. Oh. And ask if not. she would know. No. Mm, of course. Sorry. Just stay discreet. Okay. <laughs> lower, more deep and rumbly voice, or just quiet? No. It's quieter, okay. yeah, not lower. <laughs> yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, to know, and I would ask her if she knows anything about stories that people would have brought here, or talk about, or rumors about some special treasures, or stuff like that. Um, there are rumors of, although you talk quietly to her, she does not walk, talk quietly back to you. Wow, she dumb. She, she's just seeing this is not a matter that needs to be hidden, and so it's just deciding to openly talk about it. Okay, <laughs> I guess. Um, you. She talks to you. Uh, there are, from what from what I've heard at least, I don't know how accurate these things are. People tell stories to show off in front of people, especially when they're drunk. So we don't know how real these things are. <laughs> um, there are some fr supposedly um, odd trinkets that tend to be buried within the mass graveyard here in the city of Waterdeep. And by mass graveyard, I mean probably twice as big as some of the ships out there. Um, there's like a whole city district that's just a graveyard. Um, there are tales of people who will 
seek you out when you're at the marketplace if they see that you're more of a loner looking for special items be careful though they might be people who are intentionally trying to rip you off but if they are trying to rip you off they also might have some thing that's actually valuable that they are unaware is um, we also have some <sighs> there was somebody who stopped in who was talking about some kind of sickness spreading from a country down south more like not even connected to our continent just you have to like cross past a few islands to get down there yeah but a, a sickness is not a treasure well if people have the sickness then all of their valuables are going to be left when they die that's another perspective there it's a quite a wealthy um, area that port town the word valuables can I have Lazar start trying to look at it? <laughs> yes based off the volume of the waitress that's speaking it is not quiet you can hear everything from this point on forward <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> Um, right, did you write down all the stuff I was saying? Yep. Okay, good, because I didn't. Uh, of course. Can, can you remember? I know it was... Graveyard. Yep, the mass graveyard, the marketplace looking for... stuff, or... Mm -hmm. selling stuff that they don't know and the value the of. And the sickness. And down south. Um, can Noria lean in to the bar with the notepad and ask the bartender written down where the fuck are we <laughs> <laughs> um yeah sure we are uh, we are at Waterdeep it's a tremendously large port city Basically, if there's anything that you can think of, we'll have it here somewhere in the city. There's even uh, a big place called... A big tavern called the Yawning Portal that supposedly has a network of catacombs filled with valuables down there. You have to be uh, careful, Noria. though. Because <laughs> you, there are people who don't come back up. Noria then writes down water deep question mark not rune terra. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna write that down. Mm. Okay. So like that's a question to the the bartender. Mm, oh. No, this is the Sword Coast. This is uh, Faerun, not Rune Terra. Do I hear that? Yeah, he says Faerun, not Rune Terra. I w okay, Blanche's gonna look towards them. At the. when she heard Rune Terra. Uh, Noria nods her head at the uh, the bartender and kind of like questionable look and then puts the notepad back into her pocket. Is there anything that you wanted to do, Blanche, besides just look over? Uh, yeah, 
I could approach her and Joy. and say, "Hey, you talked about Rutera, and you seems a bit lost." Noria then pulls the notepad back out and says, "Yes, I'm from writes. Yes, I'm from Rutera. Uh, I came in a shipwreck." I have no idea where I am. Unfortunate. But I am from Bilgewater myself, so... And we are heading back probably in the next couple days. It's whatever. A couple, it's a so. couple weeks. So. Yeah, thank you, DM. <laughs> yeah, they, they need everybody needs to fully restock. Good. Well, we're leaving in a couple of weeks, so I guess if you prove yourself not being a threat, you could accompany us, and we can lead you back there. Noria nods and and uh, tries to reach into her um, her money pouch to offer money for a ride you will do more than just that you will have to work on the ship though noria nods and says or uh, uh, and kind of makes like a grunt noise and then writes down yeah i can do that Great. well i guess we could um, pick some meeting somewhere in a couple weeks. Noria nods and um, writes, I'm not going anywhere. Fine then. Well, yeah, there's no tone, so you have no idea how she meant that. <laughs> Lazar, by the way, you're hearing all of this, just so you're aware. Lazar, by the way, you're hearing all of this information. What? Lazar is hearing the conversation. Well, the one side of the conversation, at least. Yeah. Enough to enough to hear the mention of Runeterra. Uh, Noria, um, flips a page back to, like, maybe a page, like, all the way in the front of the notebook that says, um, Demacia, and then Noria points to Demacia, and then, like, kind of gestures, like, like a, a tent over her head. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm actually looking at a I'm trying to find a map. <laughs> if you look in the overworld maps. For the what? Overworld maps. Overworld maps. In Where is server. it? Oh. Oh, thanks. Uh yeah, Bitchwater. Ew. That's pretty far. Where are you we? You guys are to the east. So you guys are on the far right side of the... Through past the ocean. All large ways. Okay, so Demacia would be on our way to Belgewater. No. Belgewater oh, the is east. first. Demacia is oh. all the way to the left. You guys are across the ocean to the right. Of, of the Runeterra map. Would be oh. almost double the distance. Uh, Noria, Noria pulls out the no notepad back to the normal page, and writes, "Demacia is my home, but I'm trying to get to Bilgewater." Well, this is where we're hitting, so.
What did you say, by the way, Lazar? I was just trying to help with, uh... How far away Damasi is from Bilgewater. Okay. Noria then writes on the notepad kind of a somewhat insulting question um, stating, are there more people like you in Bilgewater? Like me? Noria <laughs> <laughs> um, then panics and flips a page to write of um, humanoid, that, that's what I mean. Um, there's all, all kind of people there. Mostly pirates and outlawed and stuff like that, so... Be prepared. Noria then nods and points out her, um... Sword and shield on her back. Oh yeah, can I get Noria, Lazar, and Blanche to d describe their characters? Noria, you're um, talking recently, so why don't you go first? Noria has um, dark, bobbed hair um, with uh, mismatched, mismatched color eyes. Uh, one is brown, the the right one, and the left one is green. And there's Good. scars um, across her her lips, and uh, she's she's pretty well built. She's not like feminine she's feminine but like she has pretty nice muscles she's pretty short though and kind of like a, a standoffish uh demeanor Lazar, why don't you go ahead and head Actually, on she's next. not short she's 5'11 yes yeah, that's that's pretty tall uh Lazar, and one. and Ooh. One last thing that's actually important. Um, her skin is sparkling. E. I am just a hooded uh, bird. It has all black feathers and a tattoo uh, on his beak that travels into his feathers and uh, also transfers to the feathers. Blanche. Uh, Blanche is uh six foot five tabaxi. She's she has like really short fur, like white fur. Her eyes is kind of yellow goldish. Um, she has several piercings around uh, on her ears and. Uh, she's mostly wearing black clothing. Uh, that's pretty much it. Alright. She's uh, barefoot. <laughs> great. <laughs> Bear paw? Bear paw, Bear, yeah. Bear paw. Bear paw. Yeah. Okay, cool. Beans. <laughs> Top beans. Yeah, Top beans. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you guys are finishing up your conversation, the half work is all right. We gotta kind of we gotta kind of wrap up here. We got a couple rooms. If you guys wanted rooms, but we're kind of starting to close out for the night. Good question. Nope, that's a statement. So what? What? What do you mean? I have a, qu a qu oh. I have a question to ask you. DM or character? <laughs> DM. Yeah, what's up? <laughs> uh, I guess that Blanche would um, then she had she arrived there by ship. I guess it is a ashored somewhere. Correct. Okay. It's probably like a 
a ten minute walk or something like that. Okay. So have, she, oh, sorry. Oh no, no, that's fine. You can go. Uh, I want Lazar to ask the uh, the bartender if there's a room with a patio. Uh, I I think so. I believe so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We got two. We got one on each end of the building. It's I'll not, take the one. It's it's not like a, a patio to the outside. It's kind of like a little thin railing you can step outside to. Yeah. Is that fine? We'll take the one closest to the sea. Okay, sounds good. Um, there's a little thin staircase against the wall that's honestly not super noticeable. And it's got like a little curtain that's kind of hanging over where the stairs would normally go that matches the color of the walls. Uh, it would be... Uh, I don't know, man. Let's just say... Uh, a s two silver for a night. can do that. Okay. <laughs> That's, these are just solo rooms. There's not, like, multiple beds or anything. Just have him, uh, spin the coins onto the counter and then walk up the stairs into the room. Okay. When you put the coins down, he gives you the key, and it's got the number for the room. You can find it without a problem. Wait. Uh, the two people playing cards in the middle of the room pack up after hearing the bar tender said that we're closing up. They just head outside and leave. Uh, and then Noria and Blanche, what are you... Blanche, you're going back to your ship. What is Noria doing? Um... Is there an alley nearby? Uh, yeah, there are plenty of alleys. Is it a closed-off alley? You can find one after five to ten minutes of searching. Yeah, I'm just gonna chill outside. Okay. It is it is raining and a little bit of thunder. I'm good. Okay, cool. I just find shelter. You realize after you head outside and find shelter that you and Blanche did not set a time to meet up again? I mean, I stated <laughs> I wasn't going anywhere. That's true. <laughs> That's true. I mean, anywhere <laughs> like saying of- oh, No, like you're gone. Bye-bye. No. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay, you made man. your mistake. <laughs> Uh, Communication, man. That's a thing. That's mm. why tones are problem. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, and with that, that's where we're stopping the first session for the night. Mm. Hour and a half in. Kralis and uh, Belmia. You guys still in in the background? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Here. cool. So we got, at least we have people roughly paired. <laughs> yeah. We at have, least. We have a group of two and a group of three. Yeah. <clears throat> and then next week there will be a random edition. No, I heard, I, there's, there's, oh yeah, there will be a random edition as well as the pairing of the two groups. Yeah. That's some interesting. Random. Just some I already, random. I already have the connector in mind, so it's not going to be hard. Okay. Yeah. We'll see. It'll be interesting seeing the personalities either clash or just mend together. <laughs> oh, there, it's gonna be the a definite clash. There's not gonna go well, but it's gonna be good. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> nice. We like chaos. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so that was our our first session. <laughs> zero yes, zero planned. <laughs> Uh, I will in 
three. Unless anybody has anything they want to say before we end. Yeah. No? Okay. We're gonna end in three, two, one.